Okay, we've done some cleanup here. And now we need to create the very important date table at the moment, okay? So I wanna make this as, as clear as possible because it's just so important and I see this missed so much um, within, especially within the Enterprise DNA Forum for those who um, are able to access it. Having a date in your uh, sales table, your transaction table, your, your table of all of your sort of key information is not enough. You need a date table by itself, an individual date table that you are going to link to this particular column, okay? And that is because within Power BI, there's, there's a whole subset of formulas called time intelligence functions. And you wanna make sure that a date table is implemented in your model um, because it requires it to run a lot of these calculations and to make sure that you get the correct calculations, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize this Power BI date table code, okay? So double click on that. And maybe you recognize, but this is a bunch of M code, what I just showed you earlier. And so what we need to do is we need to copy all of this code, okay? So I'm just gonna highlight it all and go Control C, right? And then I'm gonna come back into the query editor. And then I'm going to go new source, because basically what we need to do is we need to input that code into a new query, okay? So I'm gonna go new source, and what I'm gonna select is I'm gonna select blank query, okay? I'm gonna go blank query. And now I've got this uh, in the queries pane, I've got um, a query here with, with absolutely nothing in it. And then I'm gonna go to the advanced editor here, okay? Click on that. I'm gonna get rid of this by copying, uh, by pasting over it. And now I have this new code inside of this, this new M code embedded inside this query. And I'm gonna go done, okay? And then what will happen is I then will have uh, this pr these parameter fields where I can input specific date range around my date table. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go first of the first, 2018, and I'm going to go all the way up to 31st of the 12th, say 2021, just out a bit further, okay? So I'm just, I'm obviously working with um, how I write dates, um, where I'm located, but obviously the, I know the US does it slightly differently to, to, to me. So wherever you're, you, you'll just have to work out what um, is right within your um, instance of Power BI. Then I've got FY start month, and this is basically the month where my financial year starts. So if July is my first month, I'm gonna type in seven here, okay? So this is these are the parameters which are gonna set up my date table, and then I'm gonna go invoke Okay, and so what gets created here is a detailed date table out of basically nothing, about just that code, okay, around based around those exact parameters that we put in. So it starts at this particular date and it ends at this particular date. Okay, so we've got a date, we've got a year, we've got a quarter of year, month of year, etc. You're not just limited to this particular code as well you can well you can update this code if, if eventually you understand how 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 it works right you can update it say for instance you want different names on things different names on columns you can you can update it very very easily you can just come in here and update it okay but what we need to do is we we can also clean it up in the query editor so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to update the names i'm always going to reference this as dates i highly recommend that just to, just for some consistency i'm going to um, call this one the dates query Okay, then I'm gonna come back to dates and I'm gonna update a few things here, okay? I'm going to, you'll see here that some of these names aren't perfect and I would honestly change them, okay? So here I would just put a month name like that. Just make sure there's spaces in the right places. This one here, I'm just gonna put month and year, okay? So month and calendar, I'm gonna change to month and year. This one's quarter and calendar, so I'm gonna go quarter and year, okay? And I would go through and I would update all of these different things. You know, to be honest, you, 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 you might want to ultimately do it inside of the code just to speed things up a little bit. But, you know, you can also do things here. You'll see here that this applied step is being applied and all of my transformations are being recorded in there. One really interesting thing to note here around these applied steps is that all, I would always try to group similar transformations together because what happens is they are summarized in one transformation here in the applied steps rather than doing, say, changing a column name, 
then deleting a column and then going back and changing another column name. I would always try and group them just so that you, you minimize the amount of code that needs to be generated in the background automatically. Okay. And then I could say day, I could change this to day of week like that. And then I would also delete some of these. So I, I, I personally don't really use these numbers. Oh, actually, no, you do want to keep these numbers, but I don't use date international all that often. So I'd come in here and probably remove it. Um, day, day of month, I would probably remove that as well. It's totally up to you, totally up to you. You know, it depends what sort of key columns you require. These, these numeric columns here are important because um, what's going to happen ultimately is these text columns like this, this particular day of week, right? This um, text column of month and year, they don't know how to sort themselves. And so all of these columns, which seem a bit odd, like month in year and um, quarter in year, they these are sorting columns. So, you know, what we could do is we could call this month year sort, for example, you know, if we wanted to be a bit, bit clearer around what's going on, um, quarter year sort. Okay, so these are sort of like supporting columns, which are supporting these main columns that we're going to place inside of our visualizations, etc. Okay, so you know, I could also maybe delete other columns, etc. But you know, as as I say, it's it, it is it is sort of personal preference at the end of the day what you think you might utilize. But um, the key here was just showing you a way to quickly generate a date table. Okay, and um, I highly recommend doing it this way. There's actually a few ways you can create date tables. Um, but I always use this, use this way because I just think it's such a quick and easy way um, and I always get um, great feedback from users who have, you know, been creating it some fancy other way with lots of formula, etc. And then all of a sudden you, you could create this in five seconds, you know, just by quickly following these steps and adding the parameters in, okay? And it gives you all of the key columns that you probably would want to start off with when you're, when you're working in or starting off in Power BI or beginning, beginning your, you know, your learning curve within Power BI. It's a perfect table you know, to start using with time intelligence functions, etc. Okay, so I'm going to round off there. Um, that's enough, but this is, I've spent a bit of time here just because this is a really key thing to do, really key table that I want you to um, be implementing every single time you use Power BI within the query and implementing it within the query editor. Okay, let's move on.